Space Chronicles in partnership with the European Space Agency. Looking on my cloud, looking down and around. There aren't many people lucky enough to have viewed Earth from space. So many things. The dreams of so many have become reality for just a few fortunate astronauts. Sitting on my cloud, looking down and around. So what are the qualities needed for such a fascinating job? So many things. It's not enough to be a good scientist, but then be in poor health or physical shape. You have to be a good scientist and in good health and good shape. You must be able to learn things outside of the field of science and carry out complex tasks. The European Astronaut Center is based in Cologne, Germany. In the hallway hang photos of the men and women who've joined this elite group since 1978. But there are gaps to be filled. For the first time in 16 years, the European Space Agency is recruiting. Four vacancies to fill, plus four standbys. CVs are to be sent to centre manager Michel Tonini. With the interest in the ISS and the awareness of it, Columbus and so on, we're expecting between 20,000 and 50,000 applicants. But as we have quite strict medical requirements for the candidates, that number should fall fairly sharply. The recruitment drive opens on May the 19th in the 17 countries that make up the ESA. Former astronauts and the eight still in service are acting as ambassadors for the role. They stress their passion for the job without hiding the demands of a career that's anything but an easy ride. One of space's most recent visitors can testify to that. You need to go to Russia, the United States, Europe, Japan or Canada. That's a lot of travelling over a two-year period with a lot of work. I'd say that's the main drawback, with of course the impact that that has on family life. From Star City near Moscow, where trainee astronauts of various nationalities learn the secrets of the Soyuz capsule, to Space City in Houston, where they learn the techniques of NASA, the work never stops and patience is the key. Paolo Nespoli had to wait 15 years before flying to the space station. You need to maintain your passion and tenacity. In training we're made to do things that push us to the limits, both mentally and physically. We discover positive aspects of ourselves, but also others that we need to improve. But we all say that once we're in space and looking back down on Earth, all that we've been through means nothing. It's insignificant, it's so beautiful up there that we forget it all and would gladly do it all over again. Uh, Astronaut training is first and foremost the repetition of tasks that are carried out in space until they become automatic. But however thorough the training, a person squeezed into a spacesuit is never safe from the unexpected in an unfamiliar environment. We spend lots of time learning things and gaining experience and carrying out manual operations. The astronauts' talents must cover scientific experiments in zero gravity or taking things into their own hands when computerized systems break down. Then there are the language skills. I've been training, I've been working also in, uh, for space activities uh, in, in, in English. But, as you mentioned, for the uh, long-duration flights, we also have to learn Russian. Liftoff is a breathtaking sight. It's the expression of man's audacity and determination to transform dreams into reality. But it's also terrifying. An astronaut remains human vulnerable but in control of his own free will. 
Je me souviens très bien, j'étais ces I remember well. I'd been called up in 1985-1986 just before the Challenger disaster. L'annonce de la de l'accident. I was watching television when it happened and I was supposed to say yes or no. Et c'était le moment où je devais dire oui ou non. We're very aware of the risks and we accept them. It's a dangerous job. Of course, both the Russians and the Americans had accidents. It will happen again. You can't have exploration without paying a certain price. Death is sad, but it's the price you have to pay to be able to make man progress. It's an exciting job for those directly involved in the action. For friends and family, though, it's not always easy. There are long periods of separation due to training and the worry before and during space flights. Psychological stability is an important selection criteria and plays a large part in training. There are two main points to the psychological aspect. Self-care, meaning knowing how to keep yourself fit in mind and body when you're apart from friends, family or children, or Earth, everything you're used to. And then there's teamwork. That's extremely important because conflict can happen anywhere, on the job or away from it. You need to know how to resolve problems between several people. It's different when it's two people to when it's three, or to five, or to six people. In each case, there's a different problem to sort out. A healthy mind in a healthy body is important, but so is a sharp mind that's willing to learn and a calm temperament. The successful candidate will have a lot on his plate. All the tests are hard. I can't say which is the most difficult. It will be tough, but we'll have the best candidates and they'll be given extraordinary challenges. For the first time in the process, we've mentioned the moon, so the European astronauts will have the chance to go to the moon, or prepare lunar missions, or go into orbit around the moon. The ISS is a reality today. The moon is something for the not too distant future, and after that, Mars awaits. For anyone dreaming of the stars, it could be just a mouse click away. You never know.